Let's just dive in by using a direct example. So um, we're in our, our goal here is to represent the product graphically, but we're actually gonna we're gonna look at that in a different way in a moment. For now, direct calculation. Um, let's suppose I call this z and w, and if you did the multiplication of two plus three i times five plus i, you get seven plus seventeen i. Um, now, if we actually just graphed those in the complex plane. Here's my z and my w, and then zw's way up here. If you just look at that, there's nothing immediately that sticks out to us that you could think like, oh, I wonder if this is the relationship, right? It's, it's more complex than that, no pun intended. So what we're going to do next is we're going to shift our thinking about this a little bit um, and, and, and see it from a different perspective, and then we're going to develop a theorem uh, that is based on this perspective. Are you ready? Because we're going to dive in. So one shift in our mindset that has to happen is we have to think of the first complex number as acting upon the other complex number and altering it in some way. And that's actually just like um, the examples that we did previously, um, only we just had one single number. This full complex number has a lot going on with it. So let's just break it down. If we were to actually do distribution like when, when we learned when we were younger, you could think of 2 plus 3i as distributing the 2 and then distributing the 3i. So you could think of it as 2 times 5 plus i plus 3i times 5 plus i. Now what we can see is if you add two complex numbers, it has the parallelogram rule, right? If you multiply a real number here, all it does is scale it. Here, for multiplying 3 and i, it has a scaling and it's been rotated by 90 degrees. So essentially, we're taking this vector and this vector and adding them, and that result will end up being the product I was looking for in the first place. Let's jump over here and see. 2 times 5 plus i just means taking 5 plus i and doubling its magnitude. So here is 2 times 5 plus i. Well, 3i times 5 plus i means tripling its magnitude, but you also have to rotate 90 degrees. So instead of 5 plus i, it would be negative 1 plus 5i when you rotate, and then you have to triple that, right? So rotate and triple. And then here's the awesome thing. This is a 90 degree angle, and we have that parallelogram property when we add things, right? So if we just take these and make them parallel to here, guess where we end up? We end up exactly where we were before at 7 plus 17i. And that's the product that we had gotten a second ago. Now, one thing to mention, this is more than just a parallelogram. This actually forms a rectangle, which is even more beautiful than a parallelogram. So there is a really nice way to visualize multiplication in the complex plane. So now that we've looked through that example, what we did essentially was use what we previously knew, right, about those other operations and what they do to a vector or to a complex number in the complex plane. And essentially multiplying was just a combination of that stuff. But we can add to that list. So here's like the fourth column you can add to our list back when we said shifting our focus to vectors. Multiplication, okay, is thought of as a plus bi acting upon c plus di. And we distribute it like that. It's essentially always thought of as the sum of a scaled version of c plus di, right? So here's a scaled version of him. And a scaled and rotated version of him, right? So here's just the scaled version, and then the scaled and rotated version is because of this bi, okay? Um, and another fact is it always forms a rectangle, and that's pretty cool. That means now we have a full entire uh, repertoire, I guess you could say, of visuals for operations with complex numbers. Now you might be thinking about what about division? We're going to leave that one to the side uh, for now. You may use that in another course. Um, and this process forms the basis of proving the multiplication law that we're going to be learning later. 
But before we actually do the multiplication law, uh, there's one more example that's going to help us actually digest it and really understand the multiplication law. This is important because it gives us another visual for understanding visually how multiplication works in the complex plane. Uh, and it's also important, like I said, because it forms the foundation of proving the multiplication law, which we may do at some point, but not in this video right now. So this is really kind of the same example because we're talking about the same idea. We're using the same vectors here, the same complex numbers, okay? So find the magnitude and argument for zw and zw, which we've already calculated z times w. Um, if you feel like you need more practice, you can pause this now. If you don't, you can just go ahead and go into this and we'll just talk through it. Okay, so here are the three magnitudes and the three arguments or direction angles. Now, I do want you to think really carefully here. Um, if you look carefully at Z and W, you should see something interesting if you play with the numbers here and here, and these two numbers here. And again, if you want to take a pause for a moment on this and just play with this yourself and see if you can figure out how these two numbers relate to this and how these two numbers relate to this, this leads to a really important thing that we're coming up to. So, hopefully you realize something here from looking at this, but this will, this will lead to a really important thing. This times this, 13 times 26 is 338, and that's no coincidence. It happens to be true that the magnitude of two complex numbers, their product is the product of the magnitudes. And furthermore, if you look at the arguments, you can probably tell that these, uh, this is the sum of these, I should say. So, and again, this happens to be true. The argument of ZW, um, see if I have space here, arg ZW is equal to the argument of Z plus the argument of W. So that's weird. The direction of the product actually happens to be the sum of the individual directions. Now that, that might not have been obvious to you when we wrote the original vectors, but if you go back in your notes and you look at those, you could probably tell that if I took the one angle and then stacked the other angle on top of it, it's equal to the final angle. And then the actual magnitude, if you take the original two magnitudes and find their product, that's actually equal to the new product. Now there are various ways to prove that this is true, and this rectangle method is really important in that proof, and this kind of reasoning is also really important in that proof that we did here. We're going to maybe save that for another time if we have a chance for it, or another, another video to look at that proof possibly. But for now, this leads up to our final rule for this lesson. So we've just seen the complex multiplication relies on the concepts of magnitude and argument, or direction angle. And which of the two forms of a complex number, rectangular or polar, relies on those same two things? Oh, polar. So here's the recap of what we just stated. The multiplication law states, for two complex numbers, Z and W, their product, ZW, has the following properties. Okay. The magnitude of ZW is the same as the individual magnitudes multiplied, right? So the, the magnitude of the product, in words, is the product of the magnitudes. But the direction angle, the argument, the argument of the product is actually the sum of the separate angles, or the sum of the arguments. Now, this is way easier in polar form because all the process we just did in rectangular form, that was kind of long, right? Polar form actually makes it way easier. Because look, if I have Z and W expressed as A cis alpha in this case and B cis beta, and remember this means cosine plus I sine, <clears throat> then because this already has the magnitude and the direction angle built into it, then the product is super simple. All you got to do is multiply those magnitudes and you get the new one. 
and add those two direction angles and you get your new one. So complex multiplication is way better viewed in polar form, which is a big strength of it. You can go back if you'd like and look at the very last example for our last lesson and you'll, you should be able to see this happening because I kind of left it open for you. Let's apply that just with a few basic examples before we wrap up. All right, home stretch, some direct applications for our uh, multiplication law. So we're given z equals 2 cis pi over 6. Remember, 2 cosine pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6, right? Uh, and then w is 6 cis 3 pi fourths. Find z times w. Aha, remember. The magnitudes just multiply and the angles add, right? And you're going to apply that even if you square something, but remember, you're just multiplying it by itself. And the same thing with cubing, you're just multiplying it by itself three times. And then dividing, that's weird, but dividing is just the inverse of multiplying. So exactly what you think would be true is true. When you divide, you actually divide the magnitudes, and instead of adding the angles, you subtract the angles. So I'm going to leave this to you. Last one, just to pause and do them out yourself, and when we come back, I'll have the solutions written out, and we'll be done. Okay, let's take a look. <clears throat> Remember, in polar form, when we're multiplying complex numbers, the magnitudes multiply, and the arguments add. So this gives me 12 cis 11 pi twelfths. This is squaring, but it's just multiplying by himself. So you might realize, oh, well, 2 times 2, we can think of it as 2 squared, right? And similarly to this, when you're multiplying it by itself 3 times, it's 6 times 6 times 6. So in this case, it'd be 6 cubed. We can just jump straight to that. And then pi 6 plus pi 6, aka 2 times pi 6. And there's our full thing. And again, if I do 3 pi 4, add it to himself 3 times, I can just shorten it and say 3 times 3 pi 4. So there's our three results from those. And then as we mentioned with subtraction, and you'll explore this in one of your exercises, uh, the quotient of the magnitudes in this case is three, and then the difference in the angles is seven pi twelfths. So that's it for our lesson today. Happy math, and we will see you guys next time.